to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Satan, look up please, and his cohorts, demons, have created systems and structures to see to it that Jesus Christ and the reality of his Lordship is not understood and is not enthroned in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities. They have used all kinds of strategies. Remember when Jesus resurrected, the first strategy was to use money and pay people and say, just say the disciples came and carried his body. Is still the strategy till today satan will pay and do anything provided you will switch and change your assignment and listen if you do not understand this teaching we will keep having piles of people in the church and will lose the potency of the power of god and the ability to transform society with the gospel a witness so if there are five politicians whilst all of them are celebrating election and this one is saying i won pdp i won apc i won this one and everybody is celebrating and saying all sorts of things you return back and you are not party conscious you are assignment conscious you see that now now that you are there you don't just sit down and say now i've suffered my first assignment is to recover every money that i've, I've the years that the canker worm and the caterpillar has stolen no sir no sir that is a mindset that is not kingdom see when we talk about defending god's interest we are not talking about being a fanatic god's interest is not for christians alone god's interest is for all men you if you don't understand god's interest it will look like some negative tribal or partisan kind of thing no god's interest is the secret to peace is the secret to joy and development if you truly pursue god's interest all and sundry will benefit from your leadership not just for politics but for everyone you have to know the god whose interest you want to defend he is love he is light he loves all men this is the one whose interest you are defending are we blessed tonight yes i live my entire life conscious of the fact that i am a witness and if i ever will be involved in anything i have to find kingdom come in it if kingdom come is not represented i am not interested it's as simple and as honest as that can i tell you this we must get to a point in our lives where everything we do everything we do it's not just that we are believers but we are passionately we are indoctrinated with this revelation that god is depending on me to validate something about him he's using me like a painter's canvas and a brush there is something the world does not know about him there is a lot of misrepresentation about god and he sends you go and correct that perception so in the business world for instance they make all kinds of statements like until you cut corners you cannot prosper and yet the bible says god can help men prosper in the dignity of kingdom integrity but that confusion remains in that space because there are no witnesses so god would have to raise men the generic name is being a witness but he will push you to the geography of your assignment more on that next week but my assignment today is to wake you up from just the consciousness of ceo the consciousness of apostle prophet the name he calls us witness i'm a witness you are a witness 
a validator so anywhere i see the name of the lord going down the drain don't say it's none of my business my that is exactly my business it is my assignment to walk in partnership with the wisdom of the spirit and devise a strategy to correct that narrative so if i hear people say god does not heal again god does not help people again aha my ears are itching because you are calling my name there if i hear that people serve god and go down there is no dignity serving god it does not pay to serve jesus uh-uh uh-uh there is a misrepresentation of the father's intention you must fraternize with satan for you to be a gospel artist or an artist or whatever to go far you must fraternize with powers you must bow down to spirits then your ears are itching no and god says let me use you as a as a as a sample to show men that you can rise let me tell you this you have not yet seen the power of god until you are ready to be a witness you have not yet seen the favor of god you have not yet seen his ability to shift systems and structures until you are ready to be a witness a witness has a point to prove not your point god's point let me tell you how the nature of our witness is for a long time god will keep quiet so that the accusation will be clear do not mistake in god's silence god's silence is a strategy that every time they say no one rises in this family let's go back and serve idols and he seemed to keep quiet and you are saying god move now uh -uh. that's not how he walks he keeps quiet because in his realm time does not matter in one day he can do anything your entire lifetime is less than a day so when you say god hurry up he said i don't understand that language hurry means what eternity minus five years does not mean anything to him so he keeps quiet listen carefully when it's time for him to arise when he prepares a witness he will give that witness something in the court of law that is called a token of truthfulness the name is evidence when you see god silent it is because he's preparing his evidence a witness is useless in the court of law if you do not come with evidence your evidence is a token of truthfulness the bible says the end of all strife is when you bring a token of truthfulness hmm. one who provides a testimonial evidence of what he or she claims to know sit down and write this please what is an evidence an evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion an evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion an evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion an evidence is a means of establishing the validity of a fact please write it down an evidence is a means of establishing the validity of a fact hebrews chapter 6 and verse 16 hebrews 6 and verse 16 for verily men swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife this is another name for evidence is called an oath of confirmation you stole my money do you have a witness yes go and bring the witness whoever come were you there yes did you see it yes what is your evidence that's the next question woe betides a witness who does not have an evidence it takes time as security people 
it takes time to build an evidence so all the journey all your experiences good and bad all the painful things the things that the bible says we know that all things work together it is a journey of building the evidence to your witness all the times of pain the times of prayer in the night that looks like god is not answering you god why are you silent he said you don't know the case you are sent to defend that's why you don't know the kind of witness i have to build two years may not build that kind of case you are supposed to present god to a family that has believed in idols for 150 years oh moses a rod will not be enough pharaoh is a wizard a rod will not convince pharaoh enough you will need a rod you will need signs and wonders you will need miracles of nature you will even need his firstborn please sit down hear me god is calling you into ministry and after 10 years you are saying lord release me he says stay just keep praying god what is it about my own ministry my colleagues have gone ahead stay don't go anywhere let me tell you he's building evidence there is a level of power and grace that will come upon your life when he shoots you like an arrow in one day you will do what has not been done in one year hold on not everything in your life that looks negative is negative is the building of the evidence hold on do you know sometimes Ask the people who work with CIA and intelligence for them to build evidence sometimes they will have to subject themselves to be part of the problem in disguise is that true could that be why you came from the family you came from could that be why when things were working for others it didn't work for you God had to how else will they believe God lived if you did not pass through such a thing so he started follow the prophetic drama your life has been acting that you are not seeing seen one both parents go to be with the lord from your birth and you are wondering lord why is my life like this and heaven the script writer my goodness the script writer is writing and just when a car would have hit you when you said jesus is left and you thought no 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 it's part of the whole thing a day will come when you stand and say jesus is lord if anyone dares to say prove it you're going to ask them i hope you have time because i have an overwhelming evidence so choose which one you want to see is it the fact that he lifted me from the married clay is it from the fact that he blessed me in the midst of my enemies is it from the fact that he waited for every negative prophecy to finish then he started changing it one by one in the presence of everyone is it that he took me to a foreign land and blessed me there which of the evidences do you need that he's alive and heaven stands to say my goodness my god what a witness what a witness indeed what a witness indeed hmm. as a man of god hear me do not interpret things from a carnal standpoint it takes time to build evidence the stronger the evidence the more effective the witness so jesus said the ultimate evidence that i am from god destroy this temple after three days since death is the last enemy that can be destroyed in your realm if i say i am lord you will not believe it whoever owns the earth must be able to exit out of the earth and return himself back so take my life if i come back then we'll see and they said with all pleasure we even release an arm robber for your sake we've been planning to kill you now that you've offered yourself with jesus joy when he hung upon that cross he didn't hang for five minutes 
he hung long enough for history to capture his stay there when they were driving him to Golgotha it was painfully slow are you seeing why you read the Bible and sometimes it annoys you just summarize it from Pontius Pilate he died no it's not witness enough it's not evidence enough so he begins to give the details they slapped him and he was quiet and he said I can call 10,000 angels yet I keep quiet and then when he hung upon the cross he said Eloi Eloi Lamak Sabachthani take notes that the father turned his back the, the the new birth theology they did not come from the evidence the entire exegesis of the new creation was derived from the witness Paul studied all the evidences and that's where he built the case for the new believer I have been crucified with Christ he said that happened only because there was an evidence of the cross today the sign of the Christian faith is that cross nobody can deny that he hung on a cross when he died watch this when he resurrected he was not in a rush to come out he insisted until there was one person to see him and when Mary saw him she said Rabboni he said don't touch me I'm just happy you have seen it now run quickly before you forget run and go and tell the people that you've seen me I'm alive God is not done with all the arsenals of his evidence. There is the last one coming. One glorious morning. Believers and unbelievers alike. Whether you believe in him or not, there will be a shout of a trumpet. That one does not need speaker. We don't need to buy line arrays. From heaven. When you hear that, your banking, your schooling, your preaching oh may it happen during koinonia i drop the mic for you and i say save johnny we've been saying repent if you are not interested that will be the ultimate evidence no event in human history would have ever happened like that a massive disappearance of people suddenly the king of kings who say no confusion you didn't believe in me now you watch me in the moment a twinkling of an eye is only you who will see it oh all those who are not born again will not even know anything has happened they will just know that the earth has divided almost into two where are the other people this will become a bestseller after the rapture because this will be the only valid compass that helps people back no other book will matter what else is there and people will have to come and check we'll leave all these bibles for them they will read it but that is the ultimate witness but for now there are brothers there are sisters there are husbands there are wives there are nations that there are territories that have vehemently refused that Jesus is Lord some call him a prophet some call him a wise man some call him an intelligent character that passed through history some call him a founder of one of the 4,000 religions we have he says who do men say that I am and Peter said no to describe you I need the Holy Spirit to help me I can't do this on my own thou art Christ there is a world that is waiting for the demonstration the validation of every claim of Jesus he's broken that project into several assignments what you call purpose what you call your assignment is a portion of your contribution to that universal project the name thy kingdom come there is a world listen to me very carefully that is still in doubt don't you say because there are churches full of people everybody knows God on earth out of over 7.8 or so billion people 
only about 2.5 2.6 billion people are professing christians including backsliders including those who may not pseudo christian activities that's not a good statistic and the father is saying where are they in nigeria there are all kinds of things plaguing and troubling the name of the lord in this country and god is saying i have men i have children but i need witnesses and there are many people who have said lord i'm available and he said being available is not enough if you are going to stand before pharaoh to advocate an exodus you need more than an instruction you need an evidence pharaoh is a wizard he does not let people go just like that and when the heat starts coming he can say okay you women go but leave your men and leave your children or he will say leave your children and like the nation of israel was saying everybody is going but you will need an evidence the entire journey watch this the entire journey of moses visiting and revisiting egypt was to one end to convince pharaoh that he met the god of the bible the owner of the people he was oppressing and he said thus saith the lord god of the hebrews let my people go and pharaoh said okay i've heard you so if you met him what did he give you as a token of truthfulness and he said well for starters he gave me a rod and when he threw it down while it became a serpent pharaoh looked at him and said shame on you and the god who sent you if this is what he gave you to come and make me release 2.5 people go back and tell him that 2.5 million people would not live on so small a witness could it be that some of us are already witnesses but the nature of the evidence that we are presenting the court will not allow our families go the, the level of power that you have the level of grace that you operate in is too small for the kind of result that your assignment requires therefore paul gives us a formula that grace and peace can be multiplied so that you stand to a point where you have sufficient evidence acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth brothers and sisters with the holy ghost look at the extent the assignment of jesus required overwhelming witness as soon as he showed up he didn't have time to go to a radio station to say i'm here evidence is all around your mother-in-law is sick madam stand up the kingdom has come to you he gathered people and he said i want to teach you on this kingdom that i have brought and they listened they listened till they were hungry and some of them started going wicked man you wasted our time three days talking nonsense he said call them back i want to feed them and the disciples said don't don't aggravate these people they will kill us here and a young lad came with five loaves and two fish he blessed it and he says you the servers alongside the audience learn the power of this kingdom that we boast of go and serve and as they went the bread began to multiply ah it's not what you have is what is on what you have what is on what you have if five loaf and two fish can feed five thousand then it is not the loaf and the fish is what came on it that's what you must pray for to come on what is in your account that's what you must pray for to come on what is on your mind sometimes it's not more things it's more grace on what you have Is God helping us tonight? My dear sister, God has been on a journey with you for decades. And you are wondering, Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with me? I'm giving you the name tonight. He's building the case for the evidence that will make you a faithful witness. Apostle, I, the only thing I know is that I had a dream years ago. And in that dream, god said i'm going to become a great prophet to the nations and that's all he would just make me to pray for three days just when i want to eat he will say pray for and fast for three more days what is he doing with me 
my whole family members called me the black sheep remember a case is being built the day he sends you the rod that was used there will now become the rod of power the day that he sends you that scar will now become an instrument of power i know what i'm saying run away from witnesses with no scars they don't have an evidence paul said let no man trouble me you want to use in, be used by god in this end time it's not without scars a testament of your waiting a testament of your staying apostle i believe that god has called me but for five years we've not crossed 20 people in that church i love god i'm doing all i know to do be careful what you call small and be careful what you call delay the 20 people you are leading are not your members they are your leaders you have been training for that long members have not started coming members come when leaders are trained so the 20 people you have been laughing at and saying let members come let rich people come to my church shame on your anointing if you have to wait for blessed people to come when you make blessed people by that grace it proves you are called go around disturbing blessed people as though they are the ones who call you listen the training process of a witness is a hard training some of you i'm describing it to you because you are currently in the cave of adulam right now you are saying lord what is wrong with my life I'm a beautiful woman but nobody is coming to marry me I'm a wonderful woman I, I, I've done all I know to do and yet I'm not able to have a child I, I graduated and 10 years 12 years nobody has come to give me a job be patient there is an evidence that is being built don't corrupt the power of the testimony that is waiting for you through impatience hear me behind every glory there is a story the story is what makes the glory desirable if the bible just said jesus came he walked he died he resurrected even me i will not give my life to him i won't give my life to that kind of story but then when i see his passion he went through this for me there must be something special about me that's how those you are called to serve will thank you when they hear what you had to go through to be a savior they say you had to go through this to be a prophet is this the price of being an apostle is this the price of being the kingdom millionaire now they will not just clap for you because you are a billionaire they will clap for you because you are a testament of endurance you went through this so that my children will eat you went through this so that nations will be built I once prayed for a politician who was so frustrated and he told me he said apostle every time i want to stop i have spent money i campaign i do my best but then things don't seem to work out sometimes even when i know that you know everything turned in my favor i'm tired of all this i've been offered all kinds of options but i've made up my mind to stand for christ and i told him i said do you think God is wasting your time hmm. Joseph what would your story be if you were not in the prison would we really believe that God delivers the prison is where both good and bad people meet <laughs> be careful who you point in the prison because the prison is the meeting place for both good and bad people Joseph is in the prison the wine pressers are in the prison. Jesus is on the cross. The thieves are on the cross. There is a place where both good and bad meet. That's why when you don't understand what is happening with the lives of people, keep quiet and pray. Because they may be in the prison there to help those who are in the prison. 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? Why are bad things happening to this person? His brother just died. His sister just died. He's broke. He's a failure. Shame on him. You are an embarrassment to redemption. Children in the faith can talk that. But those who have truly passed through the school of the spirit understand. They can just pray and say, look, relative to your service, the result you are getting is not matching. God is doing something. Just be patient. There are times that you see the actor in a movie beating you even think he's dead. Just when you are about to sympathize with him, you see his hands moving and it gives you a ray of hope. But in the end of it, you will see victory. Believers, some of you may not like what I'm teaching you, but the making of a witness is not on the dining table with tea and bread. The furnace of affliction is how witnesses are made. I repeat, the furnace of affliction. There are prayers you can never pray away. You only pray for grace to pass through. It is a baptism you must drink of and it is a cup that you must drink of and be baptized with that baptism. Apostle, I want power. There is only a limit impartation can do. You must dig your own well. There are times when people are sleeping, you are awake and God is saying, the anointing I'm giving you is not for a local assembly. I'm sending you to the nations. You study your Bible, you finish it, God says, start again. And you say, God, you are not fair. I've finished my Bible five times. I've not preached one sermon. That preaching that is itching you, you will preach and be tired. And thank God for the residue of what you have now. He says, eat for the journey is far. There was a time in my life, I would not spend up to two weeks. Except during election, I didn't spend up to two weeks at home. Because of demand, traveling, traveling. Don't rush seasons in your life. You will miss the season you are trying to rush out of right now. Don't rush. Man of God, stop carrying complimentary cards around. Invite me. God called me. The fact that you have to beg people to believe you is a sign that your evidence is little or zero. The key to publicizing yourself is to remain in the secret place. You are studying scripture. You are learning. The day they give you a mic to preach in one conference, you will so represent the purposes of God in a way that you will never go back. While Joseph was in that prison, I remember him just saying, God, fan these flames. You have called me to be a great man. I had a dream and in that dream, I saw the sun, the moon and the 11 stars. But how would it happen? And then God said, son, we have worked on this gift. It's time to use it. Two people have dreams and he interprets the dream and even when one tried to forget him God now gave the king a dream and shot the heavens over the wise men the sorcerers and the, the wine presser said I remember my wrong there is a young man can I tell you this everything today that God is using as a weapon and teaching you how to fight with I promise you he will use it tomorrow your intelligence your beauty your grace your voice your fasting none of it is a waste you listen I I don't I don't watch so much of of television but sometimes I watch a channel called Food Network are we together and then there's this competition that they do sometimes you almost can guess what they will ask you to cook with the kind of ingredients that you see there so i want you to look at your life and look at the kind of weapons god is giving you it should suggest where you are going to the weapon of patience the weapon of endurance come on now you are smart enough to suspect and it's safe to suspect lord why are you giving me the weapon of patience why are you giving me endurance why are you training me to war why are you training me to pray why will i pray seven days dry and god says you just do what i'm telling you david i'm training you with a lion and a bear but that's not what will give you honor they are only schoolmasters. the person you are going to fight is not a lion the person you are going to fight is not a bear i can't use goliath to train you so i will use what looks like goliath so you kill the lion nobody says thank you 
I'm teaching you self-control. You kill the bear, nobody says thank you. You are there in the wilderness. Then one day, can I tell you this? When your season of appearing comes, eh? It does not look like it. You will get home in the morning and walk out like a normal day, not knowing that that is the day heaven assigned to honor and announce you. The young boy went to go and give his brothers food. And when he went, he saw a, a beast with six fingers and six toes roaring at veterans of war. And yet none of them had the courage to fight and immediately he saw them he remembered i have an evidence oh i have an evidence he went to meet the brothers and they say if you don't turn back i will slap you now you think we think we're feeding sheep here he said this god disguised me using sheep but it's not sheep that i've been tending to the same way god used you he used a job to bring you to abuja it's not the job the job gave you a platform to come here and hear this truth he can bless you anywhere listen god is a master of using situations to move you to prophecy he can use a discussion at the back of your car to connect you to a destiny helper listen always see the mystery behind the activities you are involved with god can use a sick patient in the hospital and force you to get to that hospital because someone in that hospital is connected to your next level it's not about the hospital if joseph was not in the prison how would he meet the wine presser that's why the bible says in everything give thanks complaining is an indictment on god's integrity you are you are only seeing part of the acting give thanks because there is something he's doing god is raising mighty man in this place god is raising people of power in this place god is raising signs and wonders in this place and he won't stop, he won't stop Till you look just like him He won't stop, no he won't stop Till your life looks like him He won't stop, he won't stop Till you look just like him You may cry, but he won't stop Till you look just like him You may be weak but he won't stop till you look just like him. Please don't stop, please don't stop till my life looks like you. Please don't stop, please don't stop till my life looks like you. God is teaching us how to interpret the writings on the wall. It was persecution that came as a disguise and spread the apostles to different regions when you truly become secured in the love of god you interpret everything in your life with respect to his love and with respect to your assignment there must be something you are doing oh god no for my brother to just die for my son to just die there is something you are doing i may not understand but praise the lord thine is the glory thine is the kingdom thine is the power hear me believers we must raise people who have a spiritual understanding and how to interpret things lord why am i in this nation why was i not born in the u.s or in the uk now you know the answer there is an evidence he wants to use you as a specimen of his power that nations can be transformed through men who love jesus let me bring you a word of encouragement i sense in my spirit that many believers are currently in the cave of adulam there are families who are wondering lord why will i be fasting and praying husband and wife 
and yet we don't seem to afford a meal we are not lazy we've gone to men of god for prayer we've sown seeds every time you've done right and things don't seem to happen something is going on behind the scenes i assure you every time you know you are walking in obedience and truth and yet things don't change god is preparing something sometimes it may be a table he's preparing before you witness i wonder what happened to potiphar when they anointed pharaoh when they anointed joseph to become prime minister i'm sure joseph would look at potiphar and say hello potiphar how are you and potiphar says oh dear and he says no 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 don't worry please hear me brothers and sisters god brought us tonight to teach us the ways of the kingdom that more than believers more than pastors more than business people more than mothers more than fathers he's called us to be witnesses do you know mary's whole assignment was to give birth her assignment was not to be a preacher her assignment was not your assignment on earth can be done in one day do you know that yes sir hmm. your assignment can be to give birth to that prophet who will spearhead the revival no one that demons saw it and they are attacking you attacking you attacking you and when that is happening god says don't worry i'm writing something could it be oh dear politician that god reserved you for such a time as this because he reserves his best for the last there are men of god here who are saying god is it seems like you are not utilizing the grace you have put upon my life when a football club is playing a serious tournament are we together now and when they find out that the team they are about to face maybe semi-finals or finals is a serious team they would do well to keep their best players behind because it can be a strategy with the opposing team to injure and incapacitate the key players and so for the purpose of that final match god will retreat certain people and you will see such a professional player itching but on the reserve that's what is happening to some of you god it looks like you are disgracing me you are falling my hand and god says no no wonder you are not god you are my child because you don't understand you are not thinking my thoughts i'm waiting until someone makes a statement that over his dead body for anybody to rise in this family god says now you are ready to come out i want to unleash my finest i want to unleash my brightest and the day you step your feet in that place and you say i hear there is someone who mocks the name of the lord here and the man says be careful do you know how your father died said of course i know how my father died on the cross i don't know which one you are talking about then the man knows that you are not just speaking by the flesh again ladies and gentlemen it is by this mystery that god by his mercy has brought us thus far we did not come here by luck we came here by death the price for life death the price for life two things will happen here very quickly we're going to pray and there's going to be a very serious impartation here the lord gave me an instruction listen i sense in my heart that there are some of you who are coming to the end of seasons of training listen listen it may not be everybody be sensitive i sense that there are people in fivefold there are people who your faithfulness is like there has been a marking of your script in the realm of the spirit and even you some of you from early this year you started sensing when a woman is about to give birth i'm not a woman i may never be one i will never be one in jesus name but then listen carefully from the experience of those who have given birth 
the last trimester of a woman and the moments even days before she gives birth they are delicate moments is that true correct me if i'm wrong but i know that most women prepare their things baby things already they are not ready for stories they move around with it because any moment sometimes it can happen by two o'clock she wakes her husband he says don't come I, I, you better wake up wake up because a miracle is about to happen let me tell you this i'm sensing in my spirit some of you the way you have been fasting the way you have been praying the kinds of disciplines that god has been subjecting you through please hear me oh esther could it be that it is time to see a hazardous oh ruth could it be that it is time to see boas joseph could it be that you are a day left to meet your king david could it be that the time has come to see goliath anyone who falls in the day of battle is proof you were not trained well could it be that god has seemed to be delaying you because your destiny helper is about to show up the day he entered into the country you started sensing in your spirit that there is a shift you even had dreams for some of you god uses similitudes he would not tell you exactly but you saw a celebration in your dream and you woke up and said for what in one room I have used similitudes I have multiplied visions I have come tonight as a midwife because it's time to push I have come tonight prophetically as a midwife some of you you have been carrying these children for decades you have been carrying the anointing the, the office of a miracle worker now Renard Bonke has gone to be with the Lord now many of these people have gone to be with the Lord for many of them there are vacuums Catherine Kuhlmans MV Sample McPherson's there are businessmen who you do not even know of who control the economy of nations mantles are falling here tonight anointings are falling here tonight miracles are happening here tonight for the kings to arise for revival to return for the kings to be born for revival to return yeah ali ali yo oh, ali yo oh, oh. ali ali yo oh. Many years ago, somewhere in Zaria, I used to go and pray every night. And I didn't know what God was doing. Just go pray like a fool, come back, pray like a fool. Was barely learning things about the anointing. I didn't know that it was an apostolic call to the nations. I just kept obeying blindly. I will never forget one night. That was the first time I was going to minister to someone. It was a lady late in the night i lifted my hands for the first time to lay my hands on her and there she went under the anointing i had seen this with benny Hinn. i had seen this with papa hagen now this is happening through my life my god is it a new season then the next time i remember going for a meeting and i stood out barely lifted my hands i began to see manifestations of god's power I said what is this i have always known about the call of god but what call and how far for four years now god has been telling you empty your account and you've been emptying your account like a fool lord what are you doing with me i'm telling you i've come to midwife that prophecy now you will understand that he's teaching you because of the kind of wealth you will be holding the wealth that is equivalent to the economy of nations. 
and so he does not want your heart to be inclined to it please don't think i'm just entertaining you we are going to pray and you will receive something from heaven do you know why jesus christ did not do impartation from day one you read his mentorship strategy the guys were even angry won't you lay hands on us we want to shine and he said keep quiet you will shine till you don't till you die but hold on and then when he had taught them to the point that when he resurrected he didn't even have time to celebrate his victory he said hey let's go back to the class when he was done he said now you tarry in 10 days time there is one who is called the paraclet the one who is the ultimate evidence you were not there on the cross but there is one who has been sent who was there it is in partnership with him that you can tell the world he reigns today we are able to tell the nations he's alive not because we were there when he died we are able to tell nations that he can lift you we are able to tell territories that when he speaks he says what he means and he means what he says because the cave of adulam by the privilege of god's grace has cultured us and is still building us into what today the world is celebrating you may cry but don't hurry seasons hear me there are many people who do not know what god is making out of your life the bible says now are we the sons of god and it doth not yet appear there are some of you your assignment is not in this nation you were only trained in this nation when god is done with you he will shoot you like an arrow the west still needs the power of god they brought technology we are grateful they brought all kinds of things we are grateful but right now with the kind of spiritual decadence i tell you there are saviors that are rising from the cave of adulam and god will start shooting them to asia europe canada us because there is a harvest that must be prepared the move of god that is coming is not just a move of crusades alone we're going to be discussing next week the other part of this when we discuss the geography of your witness there are people who when god is done with you there is no power that can stop you from winning that election the reason is because god is the one putting you there to do what he has trained you to do two prayer points are you ready prayer point number one i'm available lord make me usable lift your voice and cry please pray don't be distracted I'm yours, I'm yours, pray. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Lord, I'm yours, I'm yours i'm yours forever i'm yours i'm yours i'm yours my life is yours it's yours it's yours forever don't be ashamed of your tears whatever you ask of me i will do it whatever you ask of me whatever you ask of me i surrender for this purpose you were born for this purpose you were raised whatever you ask of me i surrender lord i'm available whatever you ask of me I surrender. I surrender. 
Let it be from the depth of your heart. Whatever you ask of me. Listen, listen, I truly believe with all my heart that the caliber of men and women that God is raising for the end times, I truly believe the world has not seen them yet. Many of them are silent in the cave of Adulam. Nobody knows them. Some of them are not even on TV. No ushers, no protocol, but there is fire. The refiner's fire is working. Some of them are even in villages. They are not just in cities wearing suits. At the back of that hut, at the back of that tree, praying and saying, Lord, I'm available. Hear me. I know that there are many blessed people here, thanks to God. There are many blessed people listening and following. But can I tell you this? the kind of wealth that will lift the name of jesus in this end time i assure you we've not seen it yet no no wealth that will save nations in one day not just estates not just oil and gas thank god for these things some of you god is calling you into the ministry of kingdom wealth and financing but you are receiving the training of a prophet and you are saying lord is too hard the reason is because all of us are the same thing witnesses so whether you are a pastor or a businessman god will train you together he's telling the pastor fast seven days you fast seven days politician fast seven days and you are wondering lord is it not too harsh i'm showing you the mystery now dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 